I was given this group of assets recently in this particular setup and asked if I could make the scene a bit nicer to advertise this asset pack. While I was going through it, I realized there's loads of tips and tricks here for beginners to intermediates to light their kind of product shots in general. So we're going to go from this to this and I'll take you through all the steps that I go through to light and compose a scene like this. Also check out the description to find a complete playlist on lighting in Blender for different scenarios. Okay, so the very first thing we want to set up is the camera position and the props position. So the general General composition of the scene. Now I like this idea with the guns and weapons stacked on these kind of boxes, but we've got a lot of blank space in between. So we're going to have to move the camera further out to fit them all in. And therefore the customer who's thinking of buying these assets won't get the best view of them. So we want to pack these together slightly to make sure the audience can see the detail that's in the product. And then we'll want to position our camera. To do this, I'm going to go across to the shading workspace and I'm going to set up the two side windows as the 3D viewport. So that's the icon at the top left of the window and change it to the 3D viewport. I'll bring these out slightly as well. I'll change this one to the camera view. So zero to go to camera view and the camera is set up in a relatively good position. I'll zoom it in so it takes up almost all that box and use the middle mouse button and move across my top panel here, change it to the rendered view. And that's what it's currently like with our lighting. And I'll turn off the overlays and the gizmos so we can see this nice and easily. Zoom in on my viewport and I'll keep this for now at material preview mode so I can quickly navigate around the place. And this one, I can move around and place things in the scene nice and easily. The camera view looks okay at the moment, so let's reposition the items. I'll go to top view on this one with seven on my numpad, and I'll go to wireframe mode. So once again, at the top of my viewport, I can click on wireframe there, or I can press Z on my keyboard to bring up the pie menu and go across to wireframe. I'll zoom in a bit and I'll start moving these across. So they're sort of squished in together a bit more. I'm looking at this screen at the moment, to see whether the position's working and obviously positioning them in wireframe makes it a little bit easier. I'll zoom in for some minor adjustments to make sure things are actually connected and on the floor or resting against things properly. Okay, so let's position the camera a bit better. I'll press N on my keyboard, go to view and lock camera to view and press N again to get rid of the side panel. And let's start moving this into position. Again, we want a nice shot of the products so that the audience can make them out nice and easily. That looks good. Now it's time to start thinking about the lighting. Firstly, we want to think about the position of the lights. So again, I'll use my top view here in wireframe. It's very helpful. And I can instantly see we've got a light at the front here. It's extremely bright and there's lots of hard shadows coming from it. And we've got one at the back here. I'll change the lighting properties over the side here. This particular light is 100 watts and this front one is close to 800. Now, if you want this wattage to be kind of accurate, you've got to make sure the actual scale of your objects is accurate as well. So if I click on one of my objects, press N on my keyboard and go up to item and scroll down a bit, you can see the dimensions for this object is about one meter 15 in length which means these have kind of accurate dimensions. If for any reason these weren't to scale, then your wattage won't really make much sense. So let's click on the light again. So 800 watts is a very, very powerful light. Hence why we're getting this kind of blown out look like this. So I'll bring that down to 100 and suddenly we're getting to see the colors. It does seem a little bit dark and dull though. Now for a moment, I'll just go across to rendered view and let's zoom in on this area here. Looking at the shadows, you can see there is some softness to them but generally speaking, they've got quite hard edges. Now watch what happens with the light selected if I scale it up. Notice how the shadows go a lot softer. So with area lights, you can change that intensity, giving it hard or soft shadows by changing the size. I think it looks a little bit better with a sort of softer look like this, but I'm not so sure about the position. So I'll zoom out and we'll bring that round to the side a little bit more. And what I'm setting up is what's called a fill light. So it's, so it's creating nice soft shadows from one side. I'm going to delete the point light and reuse the area light, so Shift D to duplicate to the other side. And I take that round, so that's pointing in, and I'm going to bring the size down. Bringing the size down will make this one give off harder shadows. Now already this is looking a little bit better, it's not perfect by any means, but what we have is a fill light and a key light. So you can see the shadows given off by this key light are a little bit harder, and then the fill light kind of fills in the gaps offering a nice sort of ambient light, making everything seem less harsh and dramatic. So this is a basic two point lighting setup. Although the key light, if I select that, it's usually a little bit brighter. So I'll set that at 200 for now. And you can see those harder shadows, but there's a softness broken up by this one over here. Now, some people like to have a backlight that can kind of separate the objects from the background. But in this case, it's probably not necessary because what I'm going to do is put an HDRI in the background to give it some general ambient light to fill in the gaps anyway. So in the shader editor, I can change over to the world workspace. And currently we have this background color, which is just a gray color. What I can do is press shift A to add and under texture, 
we can choose an environment texture, not an image texture, an environment texture. Plug that into the front here. It will turn pink because there's no texture loaded up. So I'll press open and go to my folder of HDRIs. Most of these are from a site called Polyhaven, link in the description. Now, what I like to start off with is a nice gray one like this. So this is Dan Bridge. The reason I go for a nice gray one is so that it doesn't affect my object's color too much. If I were to choose a pinky colored one like this, you'd actually see some influence of this HDRI and the colors in the scene. Same for this one, it would be a little bit orangey. So this one's nice and gray. The other thing about this is it's fairly soft lighting. So it's very white at the top here, but it hasn't got any really intense spots like this here, which will actually affect the direction of the light in my scene. This is a nice soft light, which will evenly light my scene. So I've chosen that one. And I often choose that one to start with because it's a nice even mix. So that's instantly kind of filled in some of the shadows a bit. So this is already looking a lot better. We can obviously come back and tinker with the intensity of the lights and the size of the lights so we can change those shadows and the brightness of the whole image. But for now, let's think about the color. Now this particular set of props or weapons has a particular color palette. It's got this sort of orangey color with a bit of gray and white. So the gray and white are kind of absence of color in a sense, but the orange is kind of key and we want to make that pop as much as possible. The only problem is that we've got an orange background as well. So it's not helping that orange to stand out. Let's click on the background or the floor in this case, go up to the shading workspace and choose object. So at the moment it's got this material just called material. I'm actually going to call this background and I'll end up using it on the boxes as well. But let's think about the color of this. At the moment we've got this orange color, but as I pointed out, it's the same as the weapons. So an easy way to make the orange and the weapons stand out is to choose the analogous color or the opposite color on the color wheel. So if I change it to blue, suddenly that orange really pops. I think this is a little bit too intense. So what I'm going to do is just bring that into the center of the circle a little bit more so it's not as saturated. So it's not too vibrant. It still helps the orange to pop out from the scene, but it's not too overwhelming. And I'll probably play with this a little bit, thinking about whether I want it to go brighter, which I think works quite well, and maybe slightly less intense again. So learning a little bit about color theory will help you a great deal in your product photography. And already I'm feeling a bit more comfortable about this scene. I'm noticing this box at the front here needs to copy the colors from the other ones. So I'll select that, select one of the other objects last. So that's now the active object and I can press Control L to link and I can link the materials. Something that is bothering me slightly about the positioning is this one here. It's kind of overlapping the one at the back and it just looks a little bit out of place. So I'm just going to reposition that one. And now I feel like we're really getting there. I feel like the boxes are really hard, so I'll probably select them and maybe add a bevel on there. So add modifiers bevel. You can see that the bevel's skewed, so I need to select all those boxes and press Control A to apply the scale. Notice that the bevel is now set correctly. If I make that one the active object, adjust the bevel and turn the segments up a little bit, I can then press Control L and copy the modifier to the other ones that are selected. I'm also going to right click and shade smooth. I think that helps a bit with the softness of the background. The other thing worth mentioning is that you can obviously think about the roughness of this. It can look a bit more plasticky, but I do feel like a good amount of roughness is helpful at making those props pop. Lastly then, I'd just look at the render settings. Obviously I'm in cycles for my finished render. It's much more realistic and you get beautiful shadows. I'm going to turn on the denoise just for the sake of rendering a bit faster. I can change that to optics if you have an RTX card and it will render that bit quicker still. And obviously change that in the render as well. Lastly, it's worth pointing out down the very bottom under color management, this file came from Blender 3.6 and it's still on Filmic. I do think it's worth changing across to AGX, which gives you a better kind of calibration of colors. Now you might want to change the look in terms of giving it some more contrast and things like that, but I prefer to keep it on base contrast and then I can do those sort of things in Photoshop. Now I can give it a render and we've got quite a nice product shot here. I do just need to stop this from happening, this overlap here. So I need to rotate this object slightly so it's got some more space and blue between so we can make out the detail in the object a bit better. So hopefully that helps you understand how I might go about lighting the scene for a simple product shot like this. I'd still probably tinker a bit at this point, but hopefully that gives you a good starting point when it comes to lighting and composition. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.